What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. On this video, I'm going to be covering the topic of how to hold the handstand on the parallel. On my previous video, I gave you five tips to better your balance when you're doing a handstand, especially on the ground. One of those tips was to actually use different elements to balance that is not the ground, and one of those elements are going to be the parallels. You guys asked me to do a completely separate video on how to balance on them, so that's what I'll be covering today. We're going to take a look at everything from how to enter, how to hold, and how to exit the handstand when you're in a parallel, and I'm also going to give you some tips, some exercises, and an entire routine that you can use to increase your balance and to increase your overall awareness when you are using the parallel. So, without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, why do we want to start using the parallel to do our handstand? The reason is that once you do a handstand on the ground, you realize that you can take that handstand everywhere you go. And the parallels are an amazing tool to use for several reasons. First one, once you get comfortable using the parallel, you can build your way up to do a handstand on a higher deep bar. Second one, it is super convenient because you can take those parallels everywhere and therefore do your handstands everywhere you go if the parallels are small enough. And third one, you can do more advanced positions and transitions that you wouldn't be able to do on the floor yet, such as LC2 handstand, 90 degree push-ups and planches, which are a lot harder on the ground than they are on the parallels. One of those skills is going to be the handstand itself, which for me and for a lot of people and for a lot of clients that I coach, it is much easier to balance on the parallel than it is to balance on the ground. But by reading through all your comments, I realized that you guys are having more trouble balancing on the parallel than balancing on the ground. Please let me know in the comment section down below, what is your take on this? It is easier to balance on the parallel or it is easier to balance on the ground? But to answer that question on this video, I'm going to say that it all depends from person to person. So let's take a look at both sides and see why is it easier to balance on them and why is it harder to balance on them. It is easy because you have more control and more balance when you are in the parallel than when you are in the ground. This is because when doing a handstand on the parallel, your hand is completely wrapped around the parallel itself and you have better control to actually prevent yourself from going forward. When you're doing a handstand in the ground, you only rely on the strength of your fingers and a little bit of your palms. But when you're using the parallel, your hand is completely fixated on the parallel so you have better control over your handstand. However, as I just mentioned, this can vary from person to person and there are a lot of people who find it easier to balance on the ground. The other reason why it's easier on the parallel is going to be less pressure on the wrist because when you're doing a handstand on the ground, your wrist has to be at a 90 degree angle in relationship to your forearm in a flexion position and all your body weight is supported by your wrist. But when doing a handstand on the parallel, your wrist is completely straight in relationship to your forearms and the pressure goes away. Therefore, you're going to be able to do a lot more handstands, you're going to be able to practice a lot more and you're going to be able also to hold that handstand a little bit longer. So now let's take a look at why it actually may be harder to balance on the parallel and to balance on the ground. The first reason and the most common one is going to be getting into your handstand. This is because depending on the height of the parallel, you're going to kick up much, much higher than if you would with your hands on the ground. The second reason why it might be harder is that you might require a little bit more shoulder strength to do a handstand on the parallel than to do a handstand on the ground. This is because since the parallels are higher, once you kick up into your handstand, it's going to be hard for you to keep your arms completely straight. They might bend a little bit and you're going to have to strengthen them back up. The third reason is going to be a fear factor of getting out of your handstand. This is because, again, depending on the height of your parallel, you are much higher in relationship to the ground, so getting out of your handstand might be a little bit scary. And if you're approaching your handstand with fear, it's going to be much, much harder to actually hold the handstand. So with that being said, how do we actually do a handstand on the parallel? First, let's take a look at the entrance. As I just mentioned, it is going to be much harder depending on the height of your parallel. So if you are struggling with this, make sure you're going into a lower parallel and then build your way up into higher and higher parallel. For this, you want to apply all the tips that I gave you on part two of the handstand journey, but basically kick up with as much force as you can and imagine your hips going as high as possible and as forward as possible instead of thinking about your feet going forward. 
Also, make sure to use a wall at the beginning so you can kick up with as much force as you can. If you are applying all these tips and your parallels are low enough and you're still having trouble to get into your handstand, you can use something beneath your feet to elevate your feet so your feet are level with your hands. Make sure that surface is stable and then just kick up into your handstand. Then you're going to build your way up or your way down into lowering that surface so eventually your feet are on the ground. Second, let's take a look at balance. When you're doing a handstand on the ground, you're using your fingers to prevent yourself from going forward and you're using your palms to prevent yourself from going back. But when you're using the parlet, your hand is not in a flexion position, your hand is completely straight and the movement of your wrist become urial deviation and radial deviation, which means that once you're in the parlet, you're going to move the wrist in this direction to prevent yourself from going forward and you're going to move the wrist back in this direction to prevent yourself from going in the same direction that it came. You also want to be aware of your hand positioning when you're grabbing the parlet. You don't want to be in a wrist flexion position because then you don't have the room to actually move the wrist in the manner that I just mentioned. You want to keep your wrist completely straight and solid, grab the parlet, so then you're going to be able to move the wrist forward if you're falling forward and move the wrist back if you're falling backwards. Last, we have the fear of exiting the handstand when you're in the parallel. The only way you can actually exit the handstand on the parallel is my favorite method that I explained on part two, which is twisting to either side of your preference. Now, the issues that we have here is, again, the height of the parallel, building the courage to actually fall, and also your hands are fixated, so you might be scary to just let go of the parallel and get out of your handstand. So, to overcome this, I recommend that you put something soft in front of the parallel so you can safely practice the exit of your handstand. That covers the basics on how to enter, how to hold, and how to exit the handstand on the parallel. Now, let's take a look at some other things that we might need to consider. First, we gotta remember that every set of parallels is going to be a little bit different. The grip is going to be different and the material is also going to be different. So the same way you feel weird when you walk on a new pair of shoes, you're also going to feel a little bit weird when you're doing a handstand on a new set of parallels that you are not used to. Then we have once again the height of the parallels. If the parallels are high, it's gonna be much harder to kick up and get into your handstand. But also if the parallels are lower, are also going to be hard for more advanced positions such as LC2 handstand, 90 degree push-ups, etc. Then we are going to have the width on which we place the parallels. Ideally, you wanna have them shoulder width. Maybe a little bit wider is a sweet spot for most people. But you wanna experiment with it and see which one works best for you. So in short, what I want to come across with all these variables is that doing a handstand on the parallel depends on so many factors from the material, the width of the parallel, the height of the parallel. So you got to experiment with different variables and find what works best for you. However, I don't want you guys to only stick to one variable, but instead try different parallel, try different width of the parallel, try even different elements that are not the parallel so you can increase your balance and your body start getting more used to being upside down. I do want you guys supply all the tips that I just mentioned but if that is not enough I'm going to leave you with a routine that is going to increase your shoulder strength but most importantly your awareness and your sense of balance when you're using the parallels. So I'm gonna give you guys a rest from my voice so you can enjoy the rest of the video.
there you have it guys thank you so much for watching the video i really hope you found some value on the information and i really hope the routine can make you stronger to hold a handstand on the parallel if you like the video don't forget to like share and leave those comments down below also if you're new to the channel subscribe for more content like this and i will see you guys all next week